Pastor Adam Erickson is a progressive Christian pastor who has become famous on social media for his acceptance and approval of unchristian things such as the LGBTQ movement, abortion, and his downplaying of the authority of the Bible. Today, I want to examine a TikTok that he made, which is also pinned to the top of his page, where he makes the claim that in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, Paul's not actually condemning homosexuality in general, and he's certainly not condemning a loving homosexual relationship between two adults, but that Paul is actually specifically condemning sex slavery involving young boys and rape. But does this argument hold up? Let's find out together here on That Scripture Life. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, I'd ask that you please check out this playlist, which will be on the screen now, or it will be in the comments if you're watching on social media. It's a playlist dedicated to false teachers and teachings in the church, so please take some time to browse through it for more scriptural content. And as always, if you like this video, please support me by giving me a like, a share, and subscribing to That Scripture Life. So here's the video from Adam. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Unlearning Christianity, Unlearning Christian Homophobia. This is part 11 in our series, and I want to talk with you about 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9. In this passage, Paul talks about certain people who aren't going to enter into the kingdom of God, and he uses two Greek words that are under question here, malakoi and arsenikotai. Malakoi means soft, generally thought of as the person who takes the passive role in this relationship. Arsenikotai means man bed, and it generally thought of as the person who takes the active role in this relationship. Christian homophobia will say, there you go. God is against homosexuality. J. Paul Sampley is a New Testament scholar and Greek historian, and he says that if you don't understand Greek history, you might think this is against homosexuality. But if you do know Greek history, you will know that Paul is talking about heterosexual men married to women who keep slave boys in their house as sex objects. This is not about two men or two women living in a same-sex committed relationship. This is about sex, slavery, and rape. So Adam is referencing 1 Corinthians 6, 9, which says this, or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals. So what Adam is saying is that in this verse, if you look at the original Greek, there are two words that are really in question here. Malakoi, which the NASB translates as effeminate, and arsenokoitai, which means male bed and male sexual intercourse. Now really, there should be no debate here. The Greek word koiten is where we get the English word koitis from. It means sexual intercourse. Now, Adam is correct in saying that malakoi can mean soft, like the passive partner in a male sexual relationship, but he doesn't mention that it can also mean effeminate, it can also mean a male prostitute, or also a boy kept for sexual relationships with a man. So the question is, how do we know which type of malakoi Paul was referring to? Well, first of all, I'd like to point out that Adam's answer to this question is, well, J. Paul Sampley says you've got to know Greek history to know what Paul is talking about. And J. Paul Sampley says that this is about boy sex slavery that was happening in the first century. And so Paul was addressing only this and nothing at all else that happens in a loving homosexual relationship. My friends, this is not how we do any kind of meaningful exegesis. We do not say, well, let's abandon the context of the passage, let's abandon the greater biblical context, and let's abandon the contextual clues around this word in particular, and instead, let's look to external sources from a guy with a degree in Greek history to find out what the Holy Spirit is saying to all mankind about human sexuality. So I'll ask again, which type of malakoi was Paul referring to? Well, the answer lies in the word found just two words after this one in the Greek, which is the Greek word arsenokoitai, which can be translated as the compound word male betters. Now, why is this word arsenokoitai so important? It's important because the argument that is going around is that because this is a word that only Paul uses in the New Testament, which is true by the way, only Paul uses arsenokoitai here in 1 Corinthians and again in 1 Timothy, but that since this word is unique to Paul, it couldn't possibly be referring to all homosexual activity in general, but that he was talking about a unique situation that was happening around him. So did Paul make this word up? 
In a sense, yes, he's the first to compound the word in Greek together, like kind of like I just did in English. Yeah, a male better is not a usual single word in the English language, but does that nullify the fact that there is such a thing as a male getting another male in bed with them? Of course not. So the bigger point here is that when Paul combines the Greek word arsenos with the Greek word koiten to form the word arsenokoitai, he wasn't making up a unique situation particular to him. He was actually quoting word for word from the book of Leviticus. If a man who lies with a male as those who lie, arsenos, koiten, with a woman, both of them have committed a detestable act, they shall surely be put to death, their blood guiltiness is upon them. So the Greek word there for male is arsenos, and literally right next to it is the word koiten, male marriage bed, male on male sexual intercourse, and it says this is an abomination. So you see, there's nothing there about slavery, child slavery, rape. It's very, very clear. He's talking about men who take other men to bed like they would a woman. So you see, you have to force the idea of rape and child slavery into that text, which is exactly what progressives like Adam are doing. And so in 1 Corinthians, Paul combines these two words, arsenos and koiten, to say that the arsenokoitai, those male bedders, those men who bed other males, will not enter the kingdom of heaven. It's clear as day. So, again, did Paul make this word up? Well, kinda, but it's based on the clear understanding that the law prohibits male-on-male -male sexual intercourse. He simply puts these two already existing words together with clear meanings into one word. Maybe to give you a modern example of this, it's really no different when we want to say, God will make a way. And instead of saying, all that, we just say, God's a, what? A way maker. Or instead of saying, Jesus is the one who breaks chains, we just say, Jesus is a chain breaker. Okay, we combine words. Same idea here in 1 Corinthians. Homosexuality is still explicitly being prohibited in the new covenant. And that's exactly what the inspired apostle is saying. He's saying, hey, this moral law regarding human sexuality, this is still prohibited in the new covenant. And you know what, friend? That this is one of the biggest critiques we Christians get regarding homosexuality. Critics will say, well, you're just a hypocrite because you eat shellfish and you eat pork, but you just want to nitpick at homosexuality and say that that's still a sin, but you're a hypocrite because eating all those things isn't sin anymore. My friends, the difference is that there has been further inspired revelation on both of these two issues. In Acts 10, Luke records for us that Peter had a vision where the Lord Jesus himself has declared all foods to be clean. You see, that's further revelation settling the issue on foods. But in the issue of sexual intercourse between males, the inspired apostle says, in the new covenant, this still applies. Those who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So this isn't about some rampant sex slavery going on in Greece in the first century. This goes way back to Leviticus. Males exchanging natural relations with women for relations with other males. Now, here's the other part of this argument. Part of this argument relies on the fact that progressives will insist that arsenos is not talking about a grown male adult. They'll just say, well, this is about pederasty. So when Leviticus 18.22 says, You shall not lie with a male, arsenos, as one lies, koiten, with a woman, gunaikos, it is an abomination. Progressives will say, that's talking about lying with a male child. It's not talking about lying with a male adult in a loving relationship. Because arsenos means male, not an adult male specifically. But friends, I hope you can see the weakness of this argument. Are adult men not males? Of course they are. Are young boys not males? Of course they are. But the natural reading of this is clear. You shall not lie with a man as you do with a woman. Gunaikos, which by the way, gunaikos is the most natural word for a grown woman. It is in fact where we get the word gynecology from. 
This is clearly talking about consensual adult relationships. But what progressives are trying to say is, nope, this has nothing to do with two grown adults who love each other and are committed to one another. This is specifically about not lying with young boys. But again, this is a forced interpretation. The word male includes boys, just like it does in English, but it does not mean that it excludes adults. It does not mean that this word male is limited specifically only to young boys. And given the context about grown women, gunaikos, it's clear what Moses was talking about. Now, if you want even more solid proof of this, then let's look at Leviticus 27.3. Then the valuation of a male from 20 years old up to 60 years old shall be 50 shekels. So Leviticus undeniably teaches that the word male is used to describe a 20 year old up to a 60 year old man. And guess what the Greek word being used there is? Arsenos. Arsenos is being used conclusively here to refer to an adult man. So you cannot say that this word is exclusively about young boys. So Pastor Adams claims that arsenokoitai is somehow only limited to sex between adult men and young boys is simply unfounded. You're forcing it into the text. Arsenos is explicitly used to describe adult males in the Bible. The practice of males betting other males is clearly called an abomination by the Holy Spirit. So to try and restrict arsenos purely to referring to young boys is clear evidence that you're trying to make scripture say something that is not saying. And it is these same words that the Apostle Paul, hundreds of years later, says, these will not inherit the kingdom of God. Lastly, I would point this out. If the Holy Spirit really wanted to say that a man shall not lie with a boy specifically as he would with a woman, well, there was a better word that could have been used. There is a Greek word specifically for boy, believe it or not. John 6, 9 says this, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? Friends, there is a specific word for a young male that the New Testament uses. In English, it's the word boy. And in Greek, that word would be paidarion. If boy sex slavery really was so rampant while well, Paul wrote this and he was so urgently wanting to address that situation specifically, he would not use the general word male to say don't lie with boys. He would say don't forcefully lie with a paidarion, which by the way is the exact word we get pederasty from, the very sin that Pastor Adam claims is what Paul was so clearly and so specifically warning the Corinthians against. Now, just a word of caution for my Christian friends. We should not look at 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and hyper-focus on Arsena Koitai and say, yeah, those homosexuals will not inherit the kingdom of God. No, friend, this isn't the only thing that Paul mentions here. He says, don't be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revealers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. So I want to ask you this as lovingly as possible. Does this describe some of you? Homosexuality is not an island to itself. You may not struggle with that sin, but do you struggle with any of these other ones? None of these will inherit the kingdom of God. This is not an indictment only on homosexuals. It's all of us. We're all equal at the cross, friends, for there is no distinction for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So while I'll be the first to say we cannot compromise on the LGBTQ issue in our world today, we also cannot fail to remember that it's not the one who says, Lord, thank you because I'm not like these other sinners who is justified. It's the one who acknowledges and says, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner who will be right before God. And I'll finish with this. And such were some of you but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. 
Such were past tense, some of us, but no more, friend. By the wonderful grace of God revealed to us in Christ Jesus, you have been washed, you have been justified. There is forgiveness for the one who has faith in Jesus. So repent and believe in Jesus Christ. He has laid down his life for his sheep so that you may glorify him and enjoy him forever. If this is what you want, come to Christ today. All right, friends, if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, like and share this video with your friends. I'll see you all on the next one. Grace and peace.